I just want to say thanks, Thomas, for speaking today. So Thomas is a, oh, sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> so Thomas is going to be presenting on using informational meetings to tap into the hidden job market. So prior to becoming a career coach, Thomas worked in various fields such as education, facilitation, manufacturing, fishing, pulp and paper, and the green industry. This rich and diverse employment background has enabled him to assist the wide variety of clients who walk through his door. As a business owner in Guelph, Thomas brings 10 plus years of combined teaching, facilitating, and coaching experience to the clients he meets with. Whether they are changing careers, exploring future options, or needed training for their job searches, his commitment to them is the same, to equip them for rewarding career journeys. And that is his commitment to you. Thanks again, Thomas, for speaking today, and good luck with the presentation. Uh, thank you, Alex, and thank you to everyone for being here and taking the time out to, uh, to be here. Um, as Alex mentioned, my name is Thomas Raugenstein. I'm a career coach, uh, virtual career coach in Guelph, Ontario. And uh, my mission as a business person and an entrepreneur is to equip people for rewarding career journeys. And I typically serve uh, educated professionals in their 20s and 30s to navigate the job market and transition into careers that are more satisfying to them. And we're going to be talking a bit about networking today. And networking might conjure up, you know, maybe nightmarish images of having to put yourself out there and exchange business cards and be on platforms and things like that that you don't enjoy. But networking doesn't have to be um, a chore. It doesn't have to be a negative thing. It can actually be very helpful and uh, something that anyone can do, introverts or extroverts. And I'm gonna be talking uh, today particularly about a certain kind of networking called informational meetings, which I believe are your most powerful job search tool that you can use in your job search, even more powerful than resumes, cover letters, applications, things like that. So um, it's a very important tool to use. And so I'm just gonna jump right in and talk a little bit about what informational meetings are and uh, I'm gonna go through about 20 minutes of speaking and then the remaining five or 10 minutes we can have for questions. So if you have a question, please write it down and then make sure that you put the question in uh, the chat, which should be on the right side here. Um, and hopefully I'll have some time to, to answer your questions. So we're just gonna uh, keep those questions to the end. So I'm just gonna share my, uh, slides here for you so that you can follow along. Just one moment here. All right. So the title of uh, today's talk is uh, Using Informational Meetings to Access the Hidden Job Market. And uh, the first thing that we're gonna look at is, you know, what are informational meetings? So informational meetings, as I, as I have defined it, are brief 20 minute meetings, they can be 20, 30 minutes with industry professionals that uh, to gather information about job prospects. So these meetings are not to get your foot in the door, they're not to ask for a job, they're simply to ask people who uh, you're trying to network with um, for advice on how to better your job search. And the informational meetings is to build relationships. Uh, it's not to perform, it's not to uh, impress people, it's to create genuine connections built on trust that are face-to-face -face with industry professionals. So what does that mean? If you're looking for a job as a nurse practitioner, maybe you'd be networking with people, uh, with nurses who work in hospitals or other healthcare facilities. You'd also be having informational meetings with managers or people who uh, or in HR, basically anyone that has the power to refer you internally in the company uh, when or even before jobs are posted. And this is really key. Informational meetings are designed to help you get access to jobs before they get advertised. And this is a scary statistic, but only 20% of jobs are actually advertised. 80% of them are are open and there is a need for them, but they haven't gone advertised yet. So don't wait for that to happen. Don't wait until something gets posted before you apply for a job because by then you're, you're waiting too late. So here's what information meetings do. The first thing they do is they give you that competitive edge. 
they enable you to tap into the 80% of opportunities that aren't advertised online so that you're not competing with anyone with an internet connection. And they help you to uh, boost your job prospects because when you are known inside a company as a person of interest, guess who they're gonna go with? Are they gonna go through a stack of 100 resumes or are they going to reach out to people that they already know, that they already trust, namely you, if you've been doing these meetings, and, and reach out to you and ask you if you'd be interested in one of the roles that uh, they uh, have need for. So it does, it gives you competitive edge, it helps you boost your job prospects, but it also enables you to build support. If you have other people in your network who are well positioned, who understand that you're job searching and can refer you uh, and give you advice on how to better your job search, you just have that much more uh, brain power or you could call it brain trust at your disposal so that you're not alone in your job search. And that's something that we uh, often feel when we're job searching is we feel isolated and we feel alone. And so doing these informational meetings is creating this, you could call it army of job search people at your disposal that can really help you um, in your, your purpose. So what do you do before you even think about doing these meetings? The first is you really gotta make sure that your online reputation is clean and credible. Google yourself. You know, what's the first thing that people are gonna do when they see a job application or even that you they hear about you when you are reaching out for a meeting like this? Uh, they're gonna Google your name. They're gonna check you out. And so one of the ways that you can control or you can control uh, the exposure uh, they have to you is to fill out a really good LinkedIn profile because LinkedIn rises to the top of Google search results. So, you know, clean up your LinkedIn profile, make sure it's at a five star rating. Uh, check the privacy settings on your Facebook or your Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is, make sure that your brand is clean, credible, and consistent across all platforms. And there's been other speakers uh, today that have already talked about the importance of consistent uh, branding. Uh, so now that you've got a clean and credible online presence, where do you actually look for people uh, to have these meetings? And there are several uh, places that you can look. Um, one again is LinkedIn. So you can look up companies on LinkedIn. They actually have lists of employees that are on uh, LinkedIn company profiles. You can look up uh, online industry groups. So again, if you're looking for jobs in nursing, you could find a LinkedIn group that has nurse practitioners and ask them what tips they would have uh, for you getting into uh, the role that you want. Or you might even find nurse practitioners who work in the organizations or the facilities that you're interested in. And it's a great way to connect with them online. Uh, you can also find uh, contacts for informational meetings through company websites. Uh, you can go and find, you can find employee information online. Sometimes they have uh, contact information there. Uh, you can even track them down on social media if you want to and send them a, a polite message. And I'll get into messaging a little bit later. Uh, you can also talk to people that you already know. Sometimes our family members, uh, we don't ask them who they know. We just talk to them about what happened the other day or you know, chit chat over dinner. But sometimes friends, family, um, cousins, relatives, they might know people that you didn't know that they know. And so let them know that you're job searching and they might be able to refer you as well. And finally, you can do online shout outs. Uh, it, if you're like me, you know, if I was already employed but looking somewhere else, I wouldn't want my employer to know that I was job searching. And so what you could do is you could ask a friend to do a shout out for you, like a Facebook post and say, hey, do you know any other, are there any nurse practitioners out there that could speak with or who'd be willing to speak with a friend of mine who's looking to break into uh, to that industry or that role? and then have them refer you to the connections that they made online on your behalf. So that way you can stay safe and anonymous and you don't have to let the public know that you're job searching. That's if you're already employed. So let's say that you found a list of contacts that you wanna use. How would you reach out to them first? 
Um, you know, sometimes you get a referral from somebody else, sometimes you don't. So whether it's a cold or warm referral, what I've done is I've put together a sample email that you can use. And again, this uh, is being recorded. So you can go through the recording and use this. I give you permission to use this. Um, but here's what a, uh, a sample email might look like. And let's say you're, you're contacting a person named John. You'd say, Dear John, you know, we haven't met, but I'm an aspiring nurse practitioner. Um, you talk about your, you know, your job title or your current status. And you could say a mutual connection of ours named Jim referred me to you um, or recommended that I reach out to you because I'm interested in exploring career options in the field of nursing. Or it could be landscape architecture. It could be any other field that you're looking to break into. Then you could say, would you be willing to meet with me for 20 minutes to talk so that I can ask you some brief questions? And here's where it's really important to let them know what your intentions are. To say that the, your purpose would not to be to ask for a job, but simply to gather information and to gain a realistic picture of the benefits and the opportunities involved in their occupation. So, you know, you could say I'd also be willing or be interested in hearing about your career path, your current role, and any advice that they may have for someone like you entering that field because maybe they've made mistakes in the past that they wish they'd done differently and so they can give you advice on how to not make those same mistakes so you can learn from their wisdom. And then you could finish off your message to them by saying, please let me know if you'd be interested, and if so, what your schedule would permit, and then you could let them know that you'd meet them on video conferencing, um, and then thank you, thank them for their time, and write sincerely, you know, and you can put your name and your designation and so on. So uh, you can use this email template. You can adapt it any way you want. Um, it's, it's just a sample of how you can reach out to people. So let's say that you've reached out to say John, and John has said, yes, I would like to meet. You set up a meeting time, and then what? Whoa, okay, how do you prepare for this? So I'm gonna give you some tips for how to prepare to do an informational meeting. There's three main things you need to do. The first is research. Look up John's LinkedIn profile. What common ground do you have with John? What are his certifications? Um, what would you like to talk to him about? Where else has he worked? The more you get to know about John beforehand, the more at ease and confident you will feel when you conduct a meeting with him. Secondly, you will wanna practice a one minute overview of your background and purpose. I don't know about you, but I have been in meetings where there was no structure set at the beginning, and so the meeting just went, meandered and went everywhere. So you wanna go in with a one minute summary that you go into and say, John, thank you for meeting with me. Um, again, my purpose here is to not to ask for a job, but to uh, seek uh, information and advice from you. And I have a few questions because I saw that you're working in an industry that I'm interested in, and that's why I'm here, just to set the tone for the meeting. And, and practice that one minute intro in front of a mirror or in front of a friend to make sure it comes across as second nature so that you get through that part of the meeting uh, with ease. Because that, that can be the, the most nerve wracking part. And once you get through that part and you get to your questions, you'll start to feel a little bit more at ease. So, so practice uh, makes perfect in this regard. And thirdly, uh, to keep the meeting on track, you'll want to have a list of six to eight questions. And those questions, um, I'm gonna give you some examples in a second, but those questions are meant to guide uh, the meeting. So here are some sample questions that you could ask John or whomever you're, you're meeting with. Uh, how did you come to work for this company? What steps did you take to land your current role? So if they tell you the steps, you might wanna imitate those. Uh, which unique skills make you so good at your job? So if they tell you that being adaptable and flexible in their particular hospital role is what their employer is looking for, then make sure on your resume that you highlight adaptability and flexibility and give proof that uh, you're able to, uh, to embody those virtues. Uh, which experiences or credentials make you one more hireable in this field? Maybe there is an additional certification that would be helpful, so you can go out and get that or earn that. 
Uh, what does your company look for in an ideal candidate? Try to model those things that they're looking for. Uh, what advice would you give to someone looking for work in this field? Or here's a good one uh, to get your resume in their hands or to send your resume to them. Would you be willing to offer me any quick tips on how to make my resume more competitive? So you're not actually saying, here's my resume. You're asking them for feedback on your resume so that um, not just to get your resume in their hands, but so that you can make your resume more competitive for a potential role in the future in that company. And then finally, and probably most importantly, is there anyone else you would recommend I talk to as I continue my search? And write those names down and follow up. Maybe John knows someone else in the hospital he works in or in the facility that he works in that would be an even better person to talk to Go to that person and use John as a referral, ask his permission first, and follow up on that. So these are just some sample questions that you can use. Uh, you can adapt it and use other questions that aren't on this list, but th the key is to have six to eight questions that you bring in. So you've, you're prepared, you've got your one minute pitch, you've done your research, you've got your questions. What do you do during the meeting? And I've got a little sample agenda here that you can see. Uh, you'd start with maybe two or three minutes of small talk. Uh, then you'd go into that one minute spiel about your background and purpose to set the tone for the meeting. Uh, then you would go into your questions. For about 12 or 15 minutes, you would uh, ask those questions and you know, bring a note paper with you. Uh, write them down as you're, as you're speaking to this person through video and write down their answers. Make sure that you have eye contact with them uh, throughout as you're writing, looking up and down, just to make sure that uh, you continue to give you know, nonverbal signals and signs that you're engaged with them. And then thank them. Wrap it up and say, thank you for meeting with me. I really appreciate your time. Um, and follow up with them after the meeting as well. And we'll talk a little bit about that um, on the next slide. But uh, here's one thing that you can do if you're asked point blank. Let's say you're scared if you get asked, are you looking for a job? So if you get asked that, you can say, yes, I am looking for a job, but I'm not, or sorry, yes, I am looking for a job, but I'm not asking for one. I'm simply gathering information and seeking advice. So that way you can continue to reiterate that you, you don't have ulterior motives. You're not there to ask for a job, even if you are looking for a job. And finally, when the meeting is over, here's what you do to follow up. Send a thank you card if you can, or a thank you email, and make sure that it's 24 hours uh, after the meeting. Don't wait longer than that. Make sure that the thank you is sent out promptly. Ask yourself, what did you learn from the meeting? What next steps do you need to take? Do I need to get another credential? Um, do I need to reformat my resume to highlight the qualities that that particular company is looking for? Um, whatever you need to do. Is there any follow-up that you need to do? What about the names they referred you to? And if you do follow up on those names, let the person you met with know, let John know what happened so that John gets the psychological reward of actually knowing that his advice is, is bearing fruit. And as you, you keep John updated, guess what? When you're top of mind and you keep him updated, let's say you, you email him every couple of weeks or every month, um, you will be top of mind in John's mind and he will be able to contact you when there's talk of a need for more staff uh, with his employer. And he can let you know that even before they post something. So it's it really is, um, helpful to have a, a virtual army of other people looking out for you while you're job searching. Um, so that about covers what I want to talk about for informational meetings. And as a closing thought, uh, I just wanted to leave this with you. The more industry pros that you talk to, the more collective brain power you will have fueling your job search. Okay, so I'm going to uh, take down these uh, slides. I'm gonna unshare the slides and come back to this. And hopefully Alex is still there and he can moderate some questions. If there are any questions that people have
that come up in the chat. Okay, let's see here. So um, one question is, a company makes an exploratory interview with you, what do you do next? So sometimes, yes, sometimes these informational interviews can turn into job interviews, and that's exactly what you want to happen uh, so that you can bypass that whole process. In that case, make sure that you come prepared. Come prepared with uh, impactful stories that demonstrate the skills that you have, and be ready to pivot. Um, I've, I've had this happen to me and I, I was prepared, so make sure that you're prepared for change. That, that's really important. Okay, one other question is, I wonder, I'm wondering if you have any advice for a fresh graduate who has an info meeting with an individual at very high, a very high position at a prestigious company. Um, so they already have an info meeting. I would give the same advice. I mean, ideally, you don't want to have Bill Gates as your first informational meeting after you graduate. Like, that is that is the highest, right? Typically, you want to have a meeting with someone who's a little bit lower down in the echelon so that you can build up your confidence. But if you're meeting with someone that's really high level, just I just reiterate, do your homework and make sure that you really – you know, cross all your T's and dot your I's and make sure that you're ready uh, to talk to them. Um, and try not to be intimidated. Go in with an attitude of, of curiosity and seeking advice. Um, you're not there to impress the person. You're there to demonstrate that you're curious, that you're trustworthy, that you're willing to learn. Um, and that's gonna get you much farther than uh, trying to be uh, uber impressive. So I see that Alex is here. Um, That's on. Alex, yeah, sorry about the delay. I was having some issues connecting. Um, so no I problem. see that you've answered those questions, I believe, in chat. Um, seems like there's another question. Uh, oh, no. Um, so there's just a comment here from Amen. He says, excellent pre presentation, Thomas. The numbers at the beginning are both shocking and an eye-opener. Definitely, definitely. Um, so I just had a quick question for you. If, say, for example, um, someone maybe, you know, they came in halfway through the presentation or something. Or like maybe they, you know they didn't catch the whole thing. They were at another session, or they never came, or whatever. What's uh, what do you think is sort of the key takeaway from your presentation? Okay, here, listen to me. Here's the key takeaway: stop applying for jobs online only. <laughs> only twenty percent of jobs are advertised. That way, you're you're only competing for twenty percent of the pie. You need to access the 80% of jobs that aren't advertised. And the way you do that is that you make yourself known through informational meetings by meeting with people in companies so that they can see you face to face, know you, trust you, and they're automatically gonna wanna go with people that they know and trust before they even consider going through a stack of 100 or 1,000 resumes. That would be my, my main piece of advice, Alex. Mm -hmm. Definitely great advice. Um, so I see another question here from Aaron. So they ask, where can we reach you? Um, you can reach me if you type in Career Coach Guelph on Google. My name will come up, Thomas Raukenstein. You can find my website at thomasraukenstein.com. You can find my contact information on Hopin here under the Speakers tab. You can click on it, and it'll take you to my LinkedIn profile. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on uh Facebook, so all kinds of different ways that you can connect with me. And informational meetings are my bread and butter. It's what I train people to do. And I've just given you the tip of the iceberg. So here's here's the thing. If you really want to get good at the tool that will give you the most bang for your buck in your job search, get good at it, practice it, and I can give you um, more in-depth tips on how to do that. No problem. Awesome. And I just see one last question here from Mason. So they asked, how do you know you have a good LinkedIn profile? Um, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> you can, there's a really good resource online. Her name is Madeline Mann, and she runs a, uh, her business is called Self Made Millennial, and she does a lot on LinkedIn, letting you know how to, how to tweak your LinkedIn profile. Um, there, there are certain things that will make your, your LinkedIn profile more competitive. The first thing is to make sure that you have a good headline. When recruiters look for people to fill talent, 
they search LinkedIn and the most searchable part of your profile is your LinkedIn headline. So make sure that your headline has keywords related to the industry uh, that you're in and the job that you're looking for. Mm. The second thing is a really good profile picture. A picture is worth a thousand words. I know it's cliche, but make sure that you have a really good professional picture. Um, and thirdly, the skills that you have on your profile. You can actually pin three of your top skills to the top of your, of your skills uh, section of your profile. Make sure the ones that you pin are the industry specific skills that you want highlighted the most because again, those are the most searchable. I could go for hours on LinkedIn because I actually used to deliver uh, workshops at the Upper Grand District School Board on LinkedIn for job search. So I can't go into detail on that, but those three things, the headshot, the headliner, and the skills section are the most searchable um, and impactful parts. Great, that's some great advice. Well, thanks again, Thomas, for speaking today. So we are just out of time now, so it is 3.30. Um, so just to let everyone know, so our panel is actually starting on the main stage right now. Um, so that's just our panel of experts, and that will be until four o'clock, and then that will finish the event. But thanks again, Thomas, it was a great presentation. My pleasure, and thank you all for coming. Thanks. Bye.